So today we're going to talk about used photo equipment, which is something that is near and dear to my heart because I, I love a good deal. And um, what I find with a lot of photo equipment is that uh, invariably people will buy it and not use it very much. And then I can buy it at a discount and use it like crazy. Uh, but I wanted to talk about a few pieces of equipment I've bought over the years that have either been incredibly great for me or have been huge mistakes. Well, huge mistakes have been noteworthy mistakes uh, or where I would have been better off just buying new. Um, things that I like to buy new are things that are consumable. Hard drives, uh, computer equipment either I buy new always or refurbished. Um, and also, I think that's pretty much it. I mean, you know, the stuff that cameras these days anyway, especially the professional models, they, they go forever. Um, and even if you do buy brand new, there's no guarantee that it's, it's, it's not going to die. So anyway, but onto the equipment. Um, we, have our, we have our cart of goodness here, which is just out of frame. But uh, I wanted to start with something simple. This is a, um, uh, a Leica lens that I bought on eBay from uh, a very nice uh, gentleman uh, somewhere in eastern Canada. Um, the price was right, of course, which was great for a 90 millimeter Elmeret. Um, F, uh, 90 millimeter f2.8, um, but I don't know if you can see this, but on the, uh, the, the of all things on the focusing, not focusing, of all the things on the, uh, on the mount, he inscribed his social insurance number twice. So guaranteed, well, maybe, I shouldn't say that. This is an old lens. He, someone else may have well done that before he got it. And I, I vaguely recall um, in, the, in the eBay listing it showing that. So this, this was purchased with, with the understanding that that was there. But I got to say that I really didn't appreciate just how um, uh, deep it would have been. And also, uh, it didn't cross my mind until I got the lens that that may well affect how the lens mounts on the camera. Uh, as it turned out, it was totally out of focus. And so uh, I got a local Leica tech in town here to, to, um, uh, to basically um, bend a couple of things to hopefully try and get it into focus. And it works pretty well, but uh, his suggestion as well was to shoot f11 or smaller. So um, that, was not a, uh, that was not a smart purchase. I mean, you know, like I say, the price was right, but then what difference does it make how much you pay for it if it doesn't actually work? Um, another piece of equipment that I bought that was not a bad deal was this is a 105 millimeter macro lens, a Nikkor lens from a good friend of mine who lives in the United States. And um, we live in Canada. So one of the problems with purchasing, uh, especially new equipment in Canada, is that Nikon Canada will only work on Canadian purchased equipment. And when I bought this lens, which is an excellent lens and I love it, um, by the time the shipping and the exchange rate was paid, it was another 50 bucks to buy it brand new in Canada. Um, so not necessarily a uh, foolish purchase, but not what you call something that was particularly worthwhile. Um, you know, at the end of the day, it just didn't really make much of a difference. Um, other pieces of, okay, so this is, this is great. This is a 150 millimeter Hasselblad CF lens. Um, these things, I, I remember salivating over these when I was, when I was younger because they were so beautiful uh, and yet they were so expensive. I got it on Craigslist for 300 bucks, and I can assure you that I didn't care what condition it was in. For $300, I'll take it, and it works like a charm. As far as, as, far as I can tell, the speeds are all good. Uh, there's no fungus in and among the, uh, in and among the elements, and um, it was you know, one of the best deals I think I've ever managed to get, given that I bought a 50 mil lens about 12 years ago, totally beaten to smithereens for $1,500. And brand new, they were like four grand. So um, that was a good deal. Here's another uh, deal that I think was, or camera that I think was a good deal, even though I probably paid too much for it. Uh, this is a Leica M2. This is um, uh, this was a, a purchase that was made uh, as a, you know, it's almost a. Well, I like to think of it as a vanity purchase. I don't actually shoot jobs with these, but they're kind of fun to have around. Um, a five centimeter, 50 millimeter f2.8 collapsible. Um, and it's actually, it's, it's in pretty good shape, this M2. Uh, what I love about it, though, and what I, I couldn't resist was the, the, the beautiful leather case, which costs, I think, 500 bucks or something like that. Uh, I think that I paid 1250 for the camera and the lens. Uh, and it's probably worth, you know, well, it was at the time, probably worth about that. And, um, but I, I just, I, I, do, I do love it. And so I didn't, I didn't you know, it wasn't a good deal, but it wasn't, wasn't too bad. Um, some other lenses, so here we go. So this is my Workhorse D3X. Um, I still shoot with this camera from 2007. Um, I bought it off a friend of mine, uh, and it was in pretty good shape. Um, but I bought it in a in a in a moment of 
Oh, well, weakness isn't, oh, well, weakness. I bought in a moment of weakness um, because I, you know, I needed to upgrade and he was selling his. And so I paid four grand for it, which was a fair amount of money for, um, for a, uh, a, a pretty, well, it was, it, was, it was the market rate for a pro body until I found out it had shot 235,000 frames. Uh, I didn't realize he was quite that busy of a shooter. So um, that was kind of winceworthy. But I started shooting with it and I love this camera. It's such a great camera. But um, I think last year the LCD finally died. So I sent it to Nikon and for 500 bucks they replaced everything except the sensor on this camera. Well, I mean like obviously not all, this, all the, uh, you know, all the, you know, they didn't replace the, I don't think they replaced all the buttons, but they did new grips, new mirror box, new shutter, new LCD, cleaned, lubricated, uh, calibrated for $500. So brand new camera. Now at 333,000 frames, uh, still going strong. I look forward to having it for quite some time to come. Um, let me see here. Oh yeah, here's, here's a piece of used equipment. Uh, this, is, this is great. This is another Leica uh, with a 50 mil lens. And uh, this piece of used equipment belongs to my grandfather. And I, um, this is one of the, this is one of my favorite cameras and not because it's such an amazing camera. The Leica, uh, I think it's a 3F with a couple of noteworthy um, modifications, a sync socket right on the top. And it's not really worth very much. Um, it was actually given to me by my uncle, but um, definitely my, probably my favorite camera. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Oh, last but not least for things that I liked. This is my 150 millimeter uh, f2.8 Zenitar large format lens. I paid thousand dollars for it. Best money I've ever spent on any piece of equipment ever because half my portfolio was shot with this lens. Now, um, of course you can make mistakes when it comes to used equipment. You can buy things that seem like a good idea. Uh, this is a uh, monopod that a friend of mine sold me and it's fine, um, but it's kind of old and it kind of pinches you all the time when you use it. And it works in, in uh, it works in a pinch, um, but it's just really not particularly, I don't know, like every time I pick it up, I think, oh man, do I have to use that? And I have used it and it has saved my bacon on a couple of occasions, but um, I didn't pay very much for it, but it, you know, I would have been better off just buying a brand new one. Um, now, oh, here we go. Okay, this is, this, 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 this is another one. Now, um, the softbox is, or any kind of fabric, um, this actually hasn't been built right now because I don't use it because it sits in the bottom of my equipment case to remind me uh, to be a little more careful when it comes to uh, making purchases. This is a, a plume um, wafer softbox, which are excellent softboxes. I love them, um, but they're expensive. And I, I, I bought this one off a photographer uh, here who was retiring and, and paid, well, paid too much money for it. I mean, it, you know, I don't know if you can see that, but, but that's the internal baffle, which is quite yellow. Um, and the whole thing, the bag that it was in, had a bit of sort of a gooiness, delaminating uh, feeling to it. The, uh, the silver inside the box itself is coming apart. And one day uh, when I was uh, putting it together, I think, or maybe I was taking it apart. Let's see if I can find this. Um, there was a little note that said, ah, there it is there, that said, second. So I'm not entirely sure where he got this thing from, but it looks to me like it wasn't that good to begin with. And I, I paid way too much money for it, especially since I, I saw another one for sale uh, a little while later for the same price that I paid and it was pretty much in brand new condition. Um, and last but not least, um, my lighting modifier. This actually probably looks pretty good to you uh, because from afar it does look good right up until you put a, a head into it, which actually thankfully you can fit a head into it. This is a, a Profoto soft art reflector, also known as a beauty dish. They're about $500 Canadian new. I paid about $250 or $275 for this, which, you know, I mean, is not, is not a bad deal, except that it, um, God, I don't know, like, who was the person who, who actually owned this thing before that? I got it. I mean, it's, I see one, two, three, four, fairly substantial dents. Um, and also, uh, I don't know if you can sort of, maybe the perspective isn't quite right, but the, it's not even round anymore. It's like someone sat on it or something like that. I don't know. I mean, it works fine, but every time I look at it, I go, God, did I actually buy that? Oh man, I spent hard earned money on this. I would have been way better off sucking it up, spending the 500 bucks on a brand new one and being able to um, really enjoy it. Cause, cause this thing is, you know, it's, it's, it's usable, but it was really not at all worth what I paid for it. So the, the key to, you know, buying used equipment is you can't let the price or at least I try not to let the price 
get in the way of um, me making a reasonable decision about what it is that I'm buying. Because I'd say about half the time, it's a good deal and it totally works out. And about half the time, it's, you know, I mean, it's sort of neither here nor there, but there are always going to be a few notable exceptions where you think, God, I, what, what a waste. You know, I, I should have just been, I would have been better off without it, with the money in my bank or with the money being spent on something that I know would have been worthwhile. So um, there you go, a little used equipment for you. Thank you.